elections of 2022. Even though I had taken the Carolina Cup win at the modified kind of like COVID date for the Carolina Cup six months prior in the gnarliest conditions I can ever remember at a East Coast race. I still didn't feel like I had really accomplished my goal of winning the Carolina Cup, the circumnavigation of Wrightsville Beach in its entirety, which is what I set out to do 10 years ago. Yes, I did feel less pressure than I had in the past because no matter what, I had a Carolina Cup title to my name and no one's gonna take that away. But for me, it wasn't the race. The going around the whole island, through the inlets, past the jetty, reading the water, picking the right line, the tide, the wind. It's everything about that event in the spring. It was the race that I wanted to win. The spring being pretty hard actually when it comes to racing compared to a fall race. A late season race, a lot of people have had kind of all summer to be on the water, warm up when it's warm and nice and convenient. Spring racing on the East Coast and in you know, further north climates, it's way tougher to motivate all winter long through your base season to do those long, slow, boring miles, you know, relatively boring compared to the higher intensity training, but to put in those miles when it's cold and frigid and your office or your bed is so warm, Spring racing sucks. <laughs> it's easy to show up when the sun's shining. It is a different story for those of us that don't live in a year-round warm climate. So this morning, we are doing a sunrise photo shoot for Team 404. It's gonna be fun. Uh, make coffee, load boards. At that point, I laughed, but I realized you guys weren't coming. You guys, <laughs> I saw that. Abby, is this your first East Coast sunrise? That's a good sunrise. So although I was feeling less pressure because of the previous win, it was definitely challenging from the conditions perspective. I moved to Heiko Lake, which is flat, and there's not any tide and there's really no wind. And although I have been able to train by pace, which I've found vastly helpful, I'm not getting the conditions that I used to get that made me really strong in paddling in conditions. So that was all playing into this late 2022 Carolina Cup. I wanted to do it and I wanted to make sure that like my ability to train for something of that length, that half marathon distance, I was kind of hoping to test to make sure it wasn't a fluke that some of the newer ways of training and what I'm understanding about physiology are actually working in real life. So I have been training my aerobic system religiously and it was time to test it against some of the, the fastest people in the United States. What you got going on, April? Breakfast of champions. The Carolina Cup. Yeah. Graveyard race. How are the conditions? Flat. There's a little wind out of the south I'm very happy about. Which way are we going? We're gonna go north. A cup, I see a lot of 404s in the lineup. It's, it's a good, good day. Yeah. Good, good day. So here I was at the start line, Carolina Cup, 
Beluga Horn, Beach Start, everybody got out really clean. Candace took the lead. I rode on the back of the draft train for about three miles in the flat ocean when it was time to go in through the inlet. Because I was at the back of the train behind Kim Barnes, behind, so Candace, Kim Barnes, Stephanie Scheidler, I cut off the, the back when no one was paying attention and took an inside line through the inlet. Um, I know my way around there really well. I train in there and play in there and practice in there a lot. And I also got lucky because Connor Baxter took that same corner and he had slid right in front of us. So I kind of just used him in front of me and his rudder as like a measuring stick. Cause if he ran aground, I would run aground. But if he made it through, I thought I would most definitely make it through. So I just used my combined knowledge of where I was going with Connor in front of me. After that, we were, um, it was a few board links in front, but it was a puffing tide in our face at that moment. I just, I knew I had to hammer down like full lactate threshold, like slightly above just danger zone kind of area. So pretty hard, but not all out to get to the tide shift. Cause the tide break I knew was right about a mile away on the inside of the intercoastal waterway. And I knew that once I got out of the channel and into the waterway, every moment, like every second that I was there, it would be an exponential gain for me to put a gap and race a little bit more comfortably or just make up for a mistake of going too hard against the current. That was either or. Uh, <laughs> Try not to plan too far in advance. But it worked. I got there and I kind of kept that lead for most of the race in the photos captured from the drawbridge. Like Kim is charging with the train and they are not far behind me. So it's it, like, I look at those photos and I'm like, oh, oh God, like, it just scares me all over again. Cause I knew they were back there the whole time. So yeah, I was running scared. And I knew with them working together, I, I knew that they could catch me at any moment. April still sustaining that lead. Nice, love hearing that chatter. Yep, so you hear a little Draft conversation. There's Working April. Together. Yeah, April! Woo! Yeah, April! There you go! April's got her headphones. She's Good in, job, she's Daniel and Modi! Woo! And I kept having to talk myself down to paddle slower and more relaxed and less hard because if I go too hard, that's the end of my race as a predominantly fast switch athlete or somebody who can, is capable, my muscle fibers are capable of generating a very large amount of lactate. Lactate is not a bad thing, lactate is fuel, but it changes what's going on inside. More info all about that if you want to talk about it at paddletraining.com. That's where we talk about the, the really cool, nerdy stuff. But yeah, I had to really keep my effort in check through that entire race and time, kind of going harder for the last two, two, three miles very carefully, but it worked and I crossed the finish line in first place. So it looks like we will have, April. perhaps it's not over till it's over, but April is looking like she's gonna be the woman's champion for the second time in one 12 month period. <laughs> Hometown hero, April Zoom. April about to uh, make it her second win in a row. I, I can't begin to tell you how good it feels to set out to achieve a goal and 10 years after setting out to achieve it, actually getting there. For somebody who is, does not identify as an athlete, um, and I never did, this was a really large stretch goal for me in my life. And there were definitely times when I did not think that it was possible. But I, I love the people in this sport, and I love the events, and I love being in nature and being on the water, and I just, I didn't want to do anything else. I'm going like, to train for something like this anyway, so I just accepted that I might never win anything and I just I love paddling um, and I love pushing myself. So with those two things combined, there it is, 2022 Carolina Cup champion. I'm thrilled. Thank you for watching the journey um, and thank you for being part of it all. Have a great day. <laughs>